What's going on guys? Today we are taking a look at the number six TFCC subscription figure, and that is Ultra Mammoth. So let's open them up. I'm gonna have to do some cutting here. All right, so packaged in Mammoth mode. Yay! So let's pull him out of here. And we got this nice heavy mammoth, and heavy is the word. He also comes with some weapon accessories, missiles and anchor missiles. So, uh, yeah, let me uh, load them up and we'll come back to the full review. Ultra Mammoth is a repaint slash remold of the original Beast Wars Neo Big Convoy. This mold was also released in the U.S. as Nemesis Prime under the Transformers Universe line. This is a very large figure, and he is, well, blue and white, <laughs> with very striking red eyes. Now, if you're wondering what the blue and white is from, if you've been following the comics that have been in circulation from Transformers Collectors Club, this is actually Ultra Magnus reformatted into a mammoth, along with Ironhide, Prowl, uh, Silverbolt, and... And I can't remember any of the other G1 characters that got beast modes. But yeah, I think this actually is a very nice striking figure. The fade job from up top of the powder blue down to the white is actually pretty cool. I actually do dig it a lot. In beast mode, he has two specific gimmicks. The first of which is this button. You push it and it will pull the trunk up. And then take the ears and push them back along the body and those will raise his tusks. Not the most interesting of gimmicks, but cool nonetheless. He also has an attack mode in this form, and this is where things start to get a little bit crazy. To form the attack mode, first take this big panel on the side of the mammoth mode and fold it out, specifically fold it out at an angle, Oops! and it can pop off very easily. I own I do own Big Convoy, which I will be reviewing at some point, and these do pop off very easily. Once you reattach the side panels here, you can see that the anchor missiles slide into these little bits. Now, the other part is probably the more difficult part. First, fold out the ears, flip up the tail, come along the back panels here and split them apart like so, and fold up the entire rear section of the beast mode. Grab the tusks and fold, pull them apart, disconnecting them from the trunk and the top of the head. Then, and this is where things get weirder, spin the whole, or push the whole section up and spin it around completely, and then fold down the missile launcher. And then we can input the missiles, like so. And here we have Ultra Mammoth's attack mode. This looks absolutely ridiculous. I am never going to display him in this mode, ever. From here, we can get into the transformation of the figure. Now, what I like to do with this mold is just pull off the cannon. And you can use this later in the robot mode as his full cannon. I just like to pull it off for the transformation. You can fire the missiles by turning this dial. I'm not gonna do it on camera because I don't wanna lose the missiles. Now, taking the figure as a whole, I'm going to go ahead and launch the anchor missiles just so they don't accidentally shoot off while I'm transforming the figure. Next, I'm going to take the front mammoth bits and unpeg them, and that will allow us to fold the entire figure open. Just making sure that the, all the kibbly bits don't get stuck on the robot bits. And once we get to this point, take the entire rear section and rotate it around at the torso, like that. Next, take the uh, cannon section, or the anchor sections, point them straight behind the figure, and fold up the front mammoth bits until they peg into the backs of the robot legs. Then these panels 
can swing around. And I probably should have done this before I folded those bits up. So these will swing around like that. Get them out of the way. And if you're guessing that this is a bit of a shell former, you would be right. Fold out the zip feet. Just get it. There we go. Get that connected. And stand Ultra Mammoth up. I'm making sure the bits aren't getting in the way. Next for the torso, what we're going to do is reach behind the mammoth head and unpeg the arms and just kind of swing them off to the side and split the mammoth head open and fold them out to form his shoulder pads. Bring the arms around and up to get the shoulders in place. Flip the arms out and then push the torso down to reveal the head. And then fold out his spiky bits. So as you can see, you can attach his giant snout cannon onto his back, though I generally leave it off. And the reason is because this figure has a trouble enough standing up on his own as is. And that's because of the way his feet are designed. You see his bottom or his heels fit nicely into this bit right here. However, his toes can't actually get onto the same plane as his heels, which is really weird. And the problem persists in every version of this figure. Every mold reuse of this figure has the exact same issue. But overall, once you do get him standing, he's a striking looking figure. I do like the overall look. I don't care for the overall kibbliness. It is a pain in the butt to transform. I like the look of this figure in both modes. I hate the transformation. And that's a real shame because this figure is really cool looking. It's a Beast Ultra Magnus. We've always wanted a Beast Ultra Magnus and we got one. Unfortunately, it's with a figure or of a figure that is really, really fiddly. In robot mode, the figure does have a couple of interesting gimmicks. Not least of which is his posability, which is excellent. Swivel up top, ball and hinge joints, swivel joints and ball joints in the elbows, fists do not move, torso articulation, ratchets in the hips, swivel and full nine, almost 90 degree, bleh, 90 degree bend at the knees. Unfortunately, because of all the kibble and because of the amount of weight that is in his shoulders, you're not going to be able to pose him all that much. He does have tonfas, which are rad. Each arm comes with a tonfa hidden in the forearm armor. Very cool. I wish they were longer. Also, the screw or the pin that is connected here just below the elbow is incredibly loose on Ultra Mammoth. I mean, there's no friction here whatsoever. And that does become a problem because I've just been fiddling with the thing and I'll move the arm and that happens, just opens right up. Also, this figure has a matrix. Open the chest and you have this nice silver matrix. Very nice, very cool. Unfortunately, it doesn't open. And this one's plastic is a little bit suspect. But overall, I'm glad it has a matrix. I really like the look of the matrix. Again, overall, this figure looks really cool. Ultra Mammoth can wield his Omega Snout Blaster, though it does take and require a little bit of creative posing to keep him from falling over. And while he's doing that, you can also deploy his anchor missiles, which I've just left out because I don't want to shoot myself in the face. But overall, as I said, he looks really cool. So guys, this has been Spade of the Vault Matrix taking a look at TFCC Ultra Mammoth. I think it's a pretty cool figure, but it suffers from the same problems that every other figure using this mold has had. And that's chiefly posability and top heaviness. Enjoy these reviews of the TFCC figures. I believe this is the last one in the subscription one line. I have signed up for the subscription series too, so when those start showing up, I'll be reviewing them. I will catch you next time.